Hey, hey, everybody, it's your girl, Planet Tie on Deck. I hope you guys are having a great day, afternoon, and or evening whenever you guys are seeing this. So, for today's true crime, I will be sharing the story of Jose Valdemero Flores and his connection to two women, one named Elsmeralda and the other named Heather, and how their lives intertwine for the absolute worst. If you guys are new here, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you guys a thumbs up the video, I will be populated higher in the SEO, and you guys will get to see other content made by yours truly. So, without further ado, let's jump on in. All right, guys, now as we jump into today's true crime, let me start by letting you guys know that all information shared in this story is alleged. And the reason for that is this case is currently uh, going to trial. Um, you guys will hear the details later on in the story, but all the, le the legalities surrounding this case has not been finalized as of yet. So all the information that I'm sharing with you all today is alleged. Now, to the left of me, I have my notes as always, so I can make sure I can share with you guys information that I've, I've put down here, okay? So let's jump right in. So Jose Romero Flores was a teenager attending O'Connor High School when he met a classmate by the name of Heather Ann Wilms. Now, he and Heather, when they met each other, you know, it was like a slow start, but they eventually became friends. Um, and, you know, their friendship just lasted, you know, just kind of lasted. You know, like when you meet somebody and you just have chemistry with them or you got feel good vibes about them and you decide to, oh, OK, so me and this person, we're just going to hang like they're funny or they have good information or they're really resourceful in some way. So you decide to keep them around. Well, no difference with these two because they became friends. Now, as time went on their friendship grew pretty close to the point where um, Heather was inviting Jose over to her house to meet her family. He met her family. They had dinner together multiple times. He came over multiple times. Uh, it was reported that the family would uh, do things like, you know, uh, have movie night, watch movies together, play games together, just sit down and chill, even listen to music together. Just regular normal stuff that you would do or that the average person would do with like a typical family friend. Now, Heather came from a rather big family as she had five siblings. Her five siblings absolutely adored her, okay? And they lovingly referred to Jose as Joe, you know, like, you know how you got a family friend. And they just come over so often, you kind of give them nicknames. You're like, oh, that's Joe. What's up, Joe, when you come through the door or something else like that? And they just had like a, you know, a good chemistry, a good rapport, a good friendship. Now, um, reports or different articles actually said that, um, that Heather she felt like Jose was more like a big brother to her. So I, I'm not sure what the class difference or grade difference when they were in high school, meaning he very well could have been like a junior or senior when she was a freshman or sophomore. It, I didn't get the specifics on that, but in order for her to feel, you know, like he was a bigger brother, usually was symbolized there was some kind of an age difference there, but I'm not exactly sure what that difference was. Now, um, so he's, you know, it's at the point where he's visiting his fam her family, you know, they adore him and, you know, they enjoy him being at the house and they're having a good time. So then uh, fast forward to after, after high school. So they get out of high school. Now, there's not a lot of information that says what uh, Jose actually did after high school. Generally, if there's no college education after high school, it's mostly it's because people usually go to work, right? Like the average person, if they do not go to college after high school, which is absolutely, absolutely normal um, for some people, if they don't go to college, they'll choose to go work a job or to get a trade or something else like that. Now, I didn't see in any articles exactly what Jose did get into. So my assumption is that he probably just start working like a lot of people do, right? Because one thing that you know is if you're not going to further your education, you absolutely do need to survive. So generally, by surviving, you need to have some kind of an income, right? So after high school, though, Heather, she did go on to attend uh, San Antonio College and Texas Lutheran University. 
okay so that's what she did after high school she decided to further her education now it doesn't say what degrees if any that she actually obtained during her tenure um, in college but it just says that she did go so these two they you know they and even though you know high school is now over these two managed to maintain a friendship even after high school now I want you guys to light up the comments and let me know do you guys, are you guys still friends with some of the people that you guys knew from high school today? Now, I know for some of my viewers watching, you are very long removed from high school, probably 20 plus years or more since the last time you were at high school. But it would actually be pretty amazing if you actually still kept in contact with some of the people that you knew back then. You guys light up the comments and weigh in. Are you guys still friends with some of the people you guys knew from high school? Um, at this point, for myself, I don't think I know anyone um, I'm definitely not in close contact with anyone who I went to high school with at that time. But um, but if you are, I say kudos to you. That's a, that's a big thing to be able to kind of hang out and still get to know somebody. Um, so now the friendship is going great. They're both living two separate lives, but still friendly with each other and still have this friendship. However, on February the 22nd, 2005, many people's lives would be abruptly changed um, forever. Now, reports say that when friends of 21-year-old Heather found her with her hands severed and deceased in her apartment around 5 a.m. Um, after repeated calls went unanswered. So on February, so about February the 21st, her friends were calling her. They were trying to get in contact with Heather. Um, they, I'm sure they had a normal routine. You know you know how friends usually do, especially if you guys go out together and they don't hear from you for a period of time. It's considered abnormal. So much like in any case, if you can't reach your loved ones, the normal times you would be able to reach them, you're going to keep trying to pursue them, keep trying to pursue them until you get them. Now, the day before this act, the day before her friends actually found her body in her house, um, her neighbors, they reported, they said that they heard sounds of a woman and a man arguing the night before. So that would be on February the 21st, 2005. They heard report, I mean, it was a lot of arguing. They heard a woman and a man um, allegedly in a repeated, uh, I'm sorry, allegedly in a heated argument. Okay. And then after the argument, there was a scuffle. So there, you know, you hear moving, you hear moving, you hear tussling, you hear things being moved, and then all of a sudden there's silence, right? Now, as a neighbor, for someone to hear something like that, some people may say, well, why didn't the neighbors call the police immediately? Well, that depends. What kind of relationship did she have with her neighbors, right? And not only that, um, was that something that the neighbors had heard before with somebody else there? Or could the neighbors have been scared to intervene because, oops, what if they were mistaken? What if what they thought was an argument and a shuffle was actually something else, right? So these are some of the reasons why people are usually generally apprehensive about getting involved when they hear things with neighbors. Um, you know, in my own experience, I've heard some, I've had some really extreme neighbors in the past. They would be yelling and hitting the walls and everything else like that. And in my mind, I'm going, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? But then seemingly hours later, everything was fine. There was no, whoever they lived with, they were absolutely fine with it. It was a normal pattern for them and that's just what they did. So that's the reason why some people are apprehensive about getting involved in stuff like that. But I know other people will question like, hey, what's up? Why didn't anybody do anything when they heard that, right? Now, um, so her friends, fast forward now, the neighbors heard that the day before on the 21st. On the 22nd, at about 5 o'clock in the morning, after her friends got no response back from Heather, they actually entered her apartment through a side sliding door, okay? They went in her apartment, and they found that Heather had her clothes, that her clothes were burned, okay? The clothes that she was wearing, they were taken off of her, and they were burned in an attempt to conceal evidence. Now, reports later confirmed that Heather had been uh, sexually assaulted before she was killed. Now, uh, reports also say that Jose was allegedly one of the last people to see Heather alive. Okay, so there was other people that Heather had talked to, different friends that she had talked to that night. I'm, I'm sorry, not that night, but the day before uh, the scuffle, like earlier in the day, there were other people who were that she knew who she spoke with on the phone. There was other people that she likely visited the day prior. Okay, however, Jose 
was one of the last people to actually be seen with her or to have had contact with her right before she was killed. Okay, now Jose was initially questioned by the police, but he was later released. So they pulled the police pulled him in and they were basically saying so you know you were one of the last people to be seen with heather so what exactly happened the last time you two were together so you know did you guys argue like any questions that police will at, would normally ask in a probing investigation you know to inquire if there's something worth merit to hold on to i'm sure they asked that in this case i'm gonna hope they did you know but yeah, generally, they would likely ask something like, you know, hey, did you guys have an argument? Was there, you know, was there any reason that you would have been upset with her or different things like that? And you know what? I guess whatever answers Jose provided was enough to satisfy the police department because they actually released Jose shortly thereafter. Now, of course, to be expected, right? Heather's family and friends were absolutely devastated when they received the call that not only was Heather found deceased, but it appeared that she was sexually assaulted, okay, and that her clothes were burnt. Even more so alarming that, you know, one of the last people to be around their daughter was the beloved family friend, Jose, which was the same guy who Heather is the one who introduced to her family and said, this is my friend, I love him to pieces, right? And then to find out later that he was the one of the last people to be around her. Now, this part, the reason why I wanted to cover this case is because I'm not sure of where everyone else is listening to this when you guys tune in, but perhaps there's a message for someone in this video today that, you know, um, you guys ever heard the saying, it's always the people who are closest to you. Perhaps there is somebody who is in your intimate circle right now who you're just not paying that much attention to or who you might not feel is capable of such things. This message could be for you that, you know, you when you Sometimes we believe people are our friends, but we don't see them for who they truly are. Now, this can happen to anybody, all of us at any given time. We know that, right? But I, I feel like I was, I feel like I didn't find this information. I feel like it came to me, which means the message may be for somebody else out there watching it. So anyway, sending you guys line love. Let's get back into the story. So, um, yeah, like I said, he was one of the last people to see her alive. Um, and then, so Heather's family, when they were devastated, they received the call. They were all confused trying to figure out what is going on. Are you even serious? They just, they didn't believe it. They couldn't believe this. Like, who would want to harm Heather? You guys know how you have, like, a family member who, like, they don't get into any stuff. They go to work, okay? They come home. He Heather was a waitress at the time that she passed. Um, so they go to work. They come home. They really don't get into any mess. She was only 21, so she was just starting out in life, okay? She literally literally was just starting you guys she was only 21 so you know it's like well what could she really have gotten into that would have made somebody want to take such a dire action against her so her family was completely like they're just like at their wits like I don't get this at all now um unfortunately um Heather's murder case it went cold after a few years so actually I believe it was for six years her case actually stayed a cold case for six years now that is until on March the 2nd, uh, 2011, a 30-year-old woman named Elsmerelda Herrera, okay, she was killed by a man she believed to be her friend. Um, she believed him to be her friend and her lover, though, not just exclusively her friend. Now, this man was tied to the rape and murder of Heather Wilms, as the suspect was none other than who? Jose Flores, Right? Now, according to an affidavit, uh, Herrera's friends told police that the couple, that the pair, couple or pair, had known each other for about a year um, and involved, and they were involved in relationships. So her friends believed that he was her guy, her boyfriend, you know, they had known each other for about a year. They believed him to be her boyfriend. So this was shocking for a lot of people, okay, her family and friends as well. Now, on March the 1st, she reportedly left her best friend's house around 8.45 p.m. saying she was going to clean her apartment before a man named Jose came over. Excuse me. Records show the couple communicated via cell phone more than 30 times that night. Now, you guys know what that is, right? If somebody, generally, if somebody's talking to you more than 30 times before they get to you, you know, it can signify you guys got some plans, you know, maybe you guys have some 
you know, I don't dare I even say adult plans, but generally, if you're just going to come over to watch TV and eat, I don't need to talk to you 30 times before you get there, you know. Uh, perhaps they were trying to make sure that all the pieces of the puzzle were going to meet by the time they hooked up. Who knows, okay? But 30 times of communication also can signify, I mean, you know, what, what, I wonder, I'm curious as to know what that communication was. Was the communication, you know, you know, just preparation, you make sure you have this ready, make sure you have that ready, I want to do this, so I want to do that. Or, you know, was the communication just back and forth talking about each other's day as well? I don't know, because that information was not released. But anyhow, so, um, you know, she left her friend's house at 845, saying that she was going to clean her house, and she was going to talk, she was waiting for a guy named Jose. Now, records show they communicated 30 times. Neighbors, her neighbors, okay, they noticed an unusual red pickup, uh, pickup truck parked on the street. And a man who lived next door told the police that at around 12.30 a.m. on March the 2nd, he was startled by a woman's loud screams, right? So so she has a next-door neighbor, okay? And all of a sudden, he hears some really loud screams, and it startles him, okay? And it's 12.30 in the morning, but again. Now, 12.30 in the morning, and the woman's screaming. What kind of screams are we talking about here? Because if, I mean, was he startled just to hear a woman scream altogether? Was it a scream of pain? Or what kind of scream was it? But then again, it, you, you sometimes you really can't tell, you know, because people have different perspective of what a scream would mean to them, right? Nonetheless, this guy who was her neighbor, he was absolutely startled when he heard the scream. And then he said he smelled smoke shortly after, I mean, I'm sorry, shortly before the San Antonio Fire Department crew arrived at 5 a.m. Now, notice a pattern here. For the case with Heather, her body was found at around 5 a.m. And then for the case with um, Elsmeralda, okay, at around 5 a.m. is when the police department actually arrived to put out the fire when her neighbor smelled smoke. Now, Elsmeralda, she, when she was found, she was tied to her bed and she was badly beaten and strangled to death, okay? Multiple small fires were set in her dwelling in an attempt to conceal evidence. Does this not ring a bell with the Heather case, right? So with Heather, her clothes were burned, right? When they found her, her clothes were burned. And her clothes were burned in an attempt to what? Conceal evidence. Now, this is fast forward six years later and Elsmeralda, there's several small fires that were actually found in her apartment and they were done in an attempt to conceal evidence as well. Now the fire department, they were able to put out the blaze. They were able to put the fire down before it really took off and destroyed everything. They were able actually to retain some evidence because they got there in a sufficient amount of time. So kudos to the fire department in this case, right? Now, um, um, Elsmeralda's family, of course, they were devastated. They now have more in common with Heather's family than they knew. Both of their daughters um, had been murdered by a man they both considered to be a friend. Now, the difference with Heather is she had known Jose since high school, and so she felt like she trusted him, you know. He had been around her and her family and her loved ones, the people she cherished the most in this world. So she definitely felt like she trusted him. Elsmeralda, she had known him for about a year. And then, so you guys, light up the comments and let me know. What do you guys think is a, is a sufficient amount of time for you to feel like you um, can trust somebody? Is a year long enough? Because I've definitely been around people and it's like you can just feel it in your spirit that they are of good stock and they are good quality people. And that's even if you know them for a year or under. And then there's other times where you, you really can't you really can't judge it, you know? So light up the comments and let me know your thoughts. Do you guys think a year is long enough to feel like you can trust someone? I definitely think in some cases it is. It is. You can feel comfortable with a person if you can go through all seasons with them and they can, you know, their character stays the same over time. So anyhow, DNA left on a Budweiser can and um, Elsmerelda's kitchen along with hairs and fibers Cell phone records and a bloody shoe print linked uh, Jose to Elsmeralda's death, and an arrest uh, an arrest warrant affidavit stated. Okay, police found indications that Elsmeralda may have been killed in her kitchen of her second story home at the Mitchell Village Apartments, but her nude body was found in her bedroom. So 
even even um even concerning the fact that Jose, you know, allegedly killed Elsmeralda in her kitchen, he took her body to the bedroom, tied her body up, even at the bedroom, even after she was already badly beaten, tied her up to the bed, and then went on through her apartment and proceeded to set fires along the way. Small fires were found in multiple rooms in her apartment. Now, the Baxter County Medical Examiner's Office ruled her death was caused by asphyxiation, by strangulation, with blunt force injuries to the head, according to their documents. In April 2011, Flores was arrested and charged in connection with Herrera's, Elsmeralda Herrera's murder. Charges were dropped less than a month later. Now, I know when the charges were dropped, so they arrested him and her family had to feel like, you know, we're finally going to get some peace. We're finally going to get some relief. Justice is going to be served. So when the charges were dropped, I know they had to, they had to feel like, let down they had to feel like you know there's there's no justice here they had to feel like you know what you got to be kidding me why in the world would they possibly drop the charges right so a request to further investigate the case was denied so the charges were dropped and family members and friends of els Moretta said oh no you didn't why in the world would you drop the charges you pick those charges back up you make sure the justice is served jose uh mr flores would need to you know, he would need to serve, justice would need to be served for what he's done. And they said, nope, we're not going to, we're not going to pick the charges back up. We consider this matter done for whatever reasons, right? Now, the case was then reopened in 2015 by then District Attorney Nico LaHood. In the final month of 2016, Jose Flores was arrested again and he was charged with both murders. Now, I know somewhat of a sigh of a relief had to play out with the family um, of both women. Like, okay, because initially they said, okay, nope, we don't have enough information. We're going to let him go. We're, we're dropping all charges and we don't want to hear it again. It took some time, but they finally heard the case again. Now, Jose was set to go to trial on September the 5th, 2022. Okay, just last year, guys, right? For the murder of Elsmeralda Herrera, a special a uh, prosecutor was assigned to the case in 2019 and is seeking the death penalty. Now, um, Jose has not been charged formally, I don't believe, or he's not been, he has not been, he has not been said to be, I guess, officially guilty formally of the case of, um, of the first victim, Heather. Okay, but they are working on the case right now. Um, he is on trial right now for the case of um, Elsmeralda, all right? Now, my thoughts and prayers definitely go out to the family and friends um, and all loved ones of Heather as well as Elsmeralda. I'm really sorry for your loss. Um, if you guys have any uh, cases that you guys would like me to cover, please feel free to click the links in my description and um, send me an email or drop me a DM and let me know what case you have in mind. Now, like I always say, there is always another story to be told, but for now.